With the bitter disappointment of relegation fresh in their minds, Gravesend would obviously be looking to bounce straight back into the Premier Division at the first time of asking. To this end, manager Gary Aldis's most notable close season signing is Steve Portway, a virtual unknown who had scored 36 goals for Barking in his last season. And visitors Paul Town are about to become the first club to fill the sharp end of his lethal scoring boots, albeit from the spot. Mickey Cotter can afford a smile as Groves End prove a constant threat to their visitors. Although assistant manager Peter Coffell could be forgiven for losing his sense of humour when he becomes the first casualty of the season. However, minutes later, it's all smiles when substitute Chris Baldred clinches a 2-0 opening win. It's not such a good start for Fleet's away programme, losing 1-0 at Ashford, followed by a 2-0 reverse at Buckingham Town. However, back at Stonebridge Road, things are much rosier, as Canterbury City are about to find out. A mixed start for Gravesend in August. There's a long way to go, but if promotion is to be a reality, Fleet need to be a bit more resilient away from home. Player of the Month was awarded to Lee Graves.
race from Chris Fordred that secures the points against Whitney in a 2-1 win is repeated at Dunstable as Fleet steal the points. Fleet progressing to fourth in the table. Meanwhile, Gravesend embark on their FA Cup campaign. Chertsey of the Deodora provide their first obstacle. And despite the fact that their host had won 5 out of 5 so far, their Division 2 status suggests on paper at least that the fleet should progress to the next round. If club chairman Lionel Ball doesn't appear to be looking too worried about proceedings at this stage, he very soon will be, as Fleet make a disastrous start to the game. Things are picking up for the fleet in the second half and it's a hapless defender that reduces the arrears and then Steve Portway brings all the smiles back and the chant of ole ole can be heard in earnest for the very first time. The game is unbelievably in its 100th minute and there is one final twist to come. Out of the cup, it's back to league action against a very strong Salisbury outfit. Oh, 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 oh,
Penalty save typifies the luckless visitors' afternoon. Salisbury look like real promotion contenders, but for now, Mickey Cotter and Mark Lee strikes are enough to give Fleet four wins on the drop and first place in the table. September's player of the month is Dennis Abbo, whilst Gary Aldis reaps reward for the team's league exploits by receiving the Divisional Award for Manager of the Month. Fleet's table-topping exploits proved to be rather short-lived. A 3-0 reverse at Wildstone is followed by a visit by an Irith and Belvedere side packed with high money stars, including former Fleet favourite Paul Bactrim. Despite Paul Burnham's second successive penalty save, Fleet find themselves 3-0 down by half-time. Yeah! second half comeback is looking likely as Steve Paulway hits an early second half brace. But by the time Lee Graves hits Fleet's third, the points are in the bag for the visitors. and Hersham sees another early exit from the FA Trophy. But the Southern League Cup is proving more fruitful. Fleet are already 4-0 up from the first leg at Ashford Town, so the return looks to be an academic affair. also saw the last game for keeper Paul Burnham. Lee Turner is the new signing by Gary Aldis, who makes his debut between the sticks in a 3-3 draw at Fairham.
month ends with Fleet returning to the winning ways in the league campaign with a little style against Andover at Stonebridge Road.
five nil thump in a Vandover leaves Fleet sitting snugly in sixth place in the table. But a big question mark hangs over Fleet's defence. Hopefully, the acquisition of keeper Lee Turner will help in that department. No doubt in the plus point of the season so far, the Fleet's attack has netted 33 goals, with new boy Steve Portway boasting 12 of his own. So no surprises when Steve is awarded Player of the Month for October. The Facet Kent Senior Cup presents Fleet with a first round tie at Kent League Slade Breed, who give their visitors an early scare. <laughs> the penalty miss gives Fleet the kick in the pants they need, and a goal apiece from Allathorne and Wayne Suizo settles the nerves, and Fleet have a 2-0 half-time lead. After the break, the Maestro takes over, we get another brace. To clinch an easy 4-0 victory, but there's still no hat-trick for the Essex men. Graves End slip up again in the league, 3-2 at Haven. That man Portway scoring both Fleet's goals. And this despite leading twice and being level at two each with two minutes to go. But it's cup action again back at Stonebridge Road, with Gravesend having the chance of a quick revenge over Erie in the second round of the Southern League Cup. Portway gives Fleet an early lead from the spot, but the visitors are level by half time.
Gravesend second half pressure finally tells when Portway restores the fleet's lead with 12 minutes to go. Ports grabs his third for the first hat trick by a Fleet player since Boxing Day 1987. The betting is that Fleet fans won't have to wait quite so long for the next. Fleet's jittery defence fails again as the visitors reduce the deficit and give the Fleet an Al Barton finale. again for what seems to be the equaliser. But a linesman's flag indicates a foul on the keeper and Fleet progressed somewhat fortuitously to round three. win on the Isle of Wight starts a run that sees Fleet march proudly up the table and in the very next match at Canterbury Gravesend get off to the best possible start. The 
goal either side of the half time as the visitors be faithful, gasping with disbelief. Thankfully, that man Portway again saves the day when he is clattered in the box and manfully picks up the mud spattered ball to do his duty. Oh, yeah, boy. Raintree Town visit Stonebridge Road the following Saturday, posing as promotion contenders, but by the end have to concede to a much better Gravesend, as the home side put together an impressive display of attacking football.
Blake 2, Allathorne and Cotter are the scorers, as Fleet give notice to the rest of the league that they are serious promotion contenders, if not the league title. And are the fans happy? Fleet followed this with an equally superb performance at Erith and Belvedere. After this one, memories of that earlier 5 3 defeat are all but forgotten. And how? At first it looks as if Fleet could pay for those missed chances when the home side grabbed an undeserved equaliser. But never fear, that man Portway is near. Grades grabs the third for Grades in before Porks is handed a chance of a second hat trick from the spot.
Fleet faithful celebrate a tremendous victory and the fact that Gravesend have gone top of the table for the second time. Perhaps on this occasion it might last a little longer. Steve Portway's exploits are unprecedented at Stonebridge Road and indeed probably throughout the whole of English football. His tally of 27 goals is a haul that many a proven striker would have been proud of in a season and we're only at the end of November. Unsurprisingly, Steve is attracting the interest of the big boys, Charlton in particular, but as yet no serious offers have been made. As a gesture to the whole team, the Player of the Month award is given to the whole team, and each one deservedly picks up a memento of a great month. Dean Wells in particular must have been pleased with his trophy as he lets go a tremendous effort to give the fleet the lead against Ashford Town and inspire his teammates to a fifth successive win. Fleet's heady march is brought abruptly and unceremoniously to an end, losing 7-0 at Whitney. Yes, that's 7-0. On a mud bath of a pitch that is more appropriate for a water polo match. But the fleet are still four points clear at the head of the table. And the visit of lowly Berrytown surely presents the opportunity of consolidating that lead. A popular goal for assistant manager Peter Koffel as he nets against his former club and is he pleased. Coffle can't take the pace anymore and has to be carried off before the fleet fans witness another hat-trick for Steve Portway as he brings his season's haul to 31. Premier Division Dover Athletic snuff out any hopes Graves in the Heaven the Southern League Cup with a professional, if not very impressive, 
3-0 win. Former Fleet player Colin Bluden among the scorers. For their part, the Graves inside put up a good fight and can argue with some justification that Bluden's goal was a handball, which he readily omits, and that the third was a dubious penalty awarded by referee Peter March for a rather tame challenge by Dennis Abbo. penalty figures in Gravesend's next game at Braintree. This time there is no doubt, as Paul Lamb prevents a certain goal with his arm and suffers the inevitable punishment. Lee Turner's superb save proves an inspiration to 10-man Gravesend, who battled bravely. And in the second half, the home side are themselves reduced to 10 men. On this occasion, the fleet make more of the opportunity than their host did, Portway netting the only goal of the game. Gravesend end 1992. Firstly, with a 5-0 Boxing Day away drubbing of Burnham, which could in all seriousness have ended in double figures. As it was, Portway with two, Coffell, Allathorne and Fordred in a rare appearance, netted for the fleet. And secondly, a 2-1 home win over Fisher with yet another brace from that man Portway. Seven points clear of Sittingbourne, who have four games in hand, Fleet are sitting pretty, if not unassailable, at the top of the table. Player of the Month is awarded, despite the 7-0 hammering at Whitney, to goalkeeper Lee Turner, who has played a major part in shoring up Gravesend's otherwise leaky defence. Portway produces probably his best goal of the season against Margate in the first match of 1993, the New Year's Day clash at Sittingbourne having been abandoned with the fleet leading 2-1 due to fog. Typical. second half penalty seals a 2-0 win for the Blue. This is followed by a trip to bottom club Berry and a chance for another league double. But it's the home side who draw first blood. Yes! <laughs> 
It's not always immediately obvious when you are witnessing history in the making, but even though Berry are holding a shock 2-1 lead, this is certainly the case, as Steve Portway takes centre stage to stretch his already phenomenal achievements to even greater heights.
In all, Portway has netted six times to emulate a similar feat by George Brewster way back in 1952. Like Berry, Dunstable are struggling at the wrong end of the table. But until they are reduced to 10 men with barely 18 minutes remaining, have succeeded in frustrating the fleet with some dogged defending. Fleet take full advantage of this as Portway adds another two goals to his staggering tally. A 3-0 win is wrapped up when Simon Ullathorne nets a real corker from a free kick. Sudbury present a totally different challenge to Gravesend, being hot on the heels of the fleet in the chase for promotion. But despite their credentials, there is no accounting for man of the season Steve Portway, as he shows them just why he is by far and away the best striker in non-league football.
first sign of any real doubts in the fleet's ability to go all the way this season is to come up Bulldog Town. The Hertfordshire outfit have had a fairly tough time of it in the league and are only just beginning to show any real form and they give Gravesend something to ponder. January draws to a close with a visit of Wildstone. The North London club had sent fleet packing with a 3-0 skyline at Vicarage Road back in October, but since then they have fallen on lean times, as serious financial difficulties have brought them into conflict with their landlord Watford. Steve Portway's goal sees him achieve a very rare sight indeed at Stonebridge Road. It is his 50th goal of the season. of Wildstone sees a crowd of 1,021, the first four-figure crowd at Stonebridge Road for two years, bearing testimony to the increasing belief that Gravesend have a real chance of glory. Gravesend's league position seems to suggest that Fleet have it all but in the bag, but it has to be remembered that Sittingbourne do have five games in hand, and there is still a third of the season to go. The Fleet's success brings Gary Aldis as his second Manager of the Month award, making him the first Fleet manager to do so. For their part, Mickey Cotter and Dean Wells receive plaques for reaching 100 appearances each, while Player of the Month is the promising young player Ian Gibbs. A midweek victory at Gillingham in the Kent Senior Cup precedes a vital league match at third place Salisbury. It proves to be an afternoon that spells disaster for the fleet that begins to cast real doubts in the minds of everybody involved with the club. The fleet never recover from conceding this first minute goal and eventually crash to a 3-0 scoreline. Anything you can do seems to be the motto as Graves then emulate Salisbury when Steve Portwaite, who else, opens the scoring at the start of the clash with Haven in what proves to be a high scoring and very exciting encounter.
With time running out, Fleet surge into the visitors' box and are awarded a penalty. If Port scores this, he will boast 50 League and Cup goals for the season. The penalty came well into injury time, and although they can count themselves somewhat fortunate, the three points are gratefully acclaimed, as the pressure at the top really begins to tell. Gravesend's lead is gradually being whittled away, and by the end of the next match at second place Sittingbourne, he's reduced to just three points, with the high spending Kent rivals running out winners by this lone goal, in front of 3,074 spectators. Possessing the bonus of three games in hand, the Bourne are proving a serious threat to the fleet, so the following Saturday's visit to Lowly Andover becomes extremely important with nothing less than three points an absolute necessity. A repeat of the 5-0 scoreline achieved at Stonebridge Road would do very nicely indeed, but that looks most unlikely when a misunderstanding between Dennis Abbo and Lee Turner present the home side with a soft goal. Despite the relief of the penalty, Andover shot their visitors again, before Steve Portway saves Fleet's blushes. But the salvaged point is just not good enough, as Fleet finally lose their top of the table place to Sittingbourne on goal difference. There are now very serious doubts as to the chances of Gravesend's in truth young and inexperienced squad and the team is crying out for the injection of an experienced player or two, especially in midfield, but there is nothing forthcoming as yet. Dennis Sabo picks up his second player of the month award, but in essence it has been a very disappointing month for the club captain. Portway repeats his performance against Haven with his virtuoso effort in the opening minute against Buckingham Town and the smiles return, at least for the moment.
A super strike by Paul Lamb to restore the fleet's lead is supplemented by Chris Baldred making a rare appearance on the stroke of half time. One, Graves then looked good for another three points. But then, Fleet's now frustratingly frail defence goes to pieces. for the second successive home game offers the chance of a reprieve. But it's not to be, as the pressure begins to affect even Portway himself. The missed penalty signals the start of a run of five successive defeats. Losing 1-0 at home to Newport Isle of Wight, 2-0 away to Margate and 1-0 at home to both Bulldog and Fairham, as the fleet's nerve finally breaks. And this despite the signing on loan of Tommy Warrillow, from Sittingbourne. So by the time Grayson and visit Ashford 10 in the semi-final of the Kent Senior Cup, the league season is in tatters and the match now takes on greater significance, presenting their best chance of silverware at the end of the season. But even this is looking unlikely as the home side take the lead. Dennis Abbo sends the game into extra time with his first goal of the season, but it takes a crazy penalty decision to finally send the fleet crashing out. An absolutely disastrous month for the fleet, in which they have realistically kissed goodbye to the title, with promotion relying on the misfortunes of others. Steve Portway's sudden goal drought, his only strike of the month being that opening effort against Buckingham, synonymous with the changes in Gravesend's fortunes. Player of the month was awarded to Paul Lamb. A visit to Paul Town opens the final month of the season. Strangely, with the chances of honours now looking remote, the pressure seems to lift and Fleet rediscover some of their earlier form. Gravesend lead 1-0 at half-time through Mickey Cotter, but two early second-half goals by the home side see the fleet down by 2-1, before this free kick presents the opportunity to draw level. Mel Watkins' goal is added to by a super effort by Cotter, to clinch a 3-2 win and keep alive a slender outside chance of claiming a promotion spot.
Burnham on the visit as engraves in his penultimate home game of the season, with the fleet hoping to emulate a 5-0 success gained on Boxing Day. Yet another penalty presents Steve Portway with a chance of equaling the Southern League record of 53 league and cup goals set way back in 1951. That 42-year record is now smashed as Steve becomes the highest scoring player of all time in the Southern League. Another Portway hat trick for Fleet fans to savour as he reaches 55 League and Cup goals for the season. Finally, Mickey Cotter adds one of his own specials to cap a 4 1 win. Gravesend visit Fisher Athletic still amazingly in second place. Although games in hand by Salisbury, Haven and Whitney should change this as the season reaches its climax. Fleet struggled to find the net in the first half with Portway missing a penalty. But Steve finally makes the breakthrough on the hour for his 60th goal of the season. This is followed by further strikes from Peter Coffell, Simon Ullathorn and Jason Ede making his first league appearance of the season. Graves then make their final home appearance with a long-awaited clash with deadly rivals and champions-elect Sittingbourne. If things had turned out differently, this would have been the match to decide who won the title and who had to settle the runners-up. As it is, it's still a high-profile match which attracts the fleet's biggest crowd of the season, 1,867, and they are about to be treated to a real thriller which would have been fitting for a championship decider, if only.
Gravesend wrap up their season with a 3-1 win away to Sudbury Town. And no, that man Portway was not on the score sheet. So in the end it was not to be. Taking everything into consideration, challenge for promotion proved just a little too much for the young players of Gravesend. Many will point to the poor run of results towards the end of the season as a deciding factor behind the team's failure. But in truth, the inconsistent start to their campaign left the lads with very little room for error. All in all, however, it proved an entertaining and exciting season. A welcome break indeed from the normal course of events at Stonebridge Road. Now it can only be hoped that the management team of Gary and Peter can strengthen the site during the closed season so that the fleet can mount a more successful bid on one of those important promotion spots in 93-94. I'll leave you with some of the comments gathered during the season from Peter Cockrell and 61 goal player of the year, Steve Portway. can't thank the supporters enough. I mean, to go all that way, we must have had at least 60 or 70 supporters there. And it was just it was just like a home game. And uh, I would say that that must have been worth the win, without a doubt. I think if it hadn't been for the supporters, it might have been a draw. But they was right behind us. And uh, I mean, if you don't want to win for them, you've got no chance. But the spirit goes, like you say, right from the chairman, right down to the, the supporter, right down to little Leon, who does the dressing room for us. Um, everybody wants to be involved. If, Yes, well, uh, I played for Barking last season and uh, I, I started quite well then, but I stopped on nine goals for about three or four weeks and everyone said that I wasn't going to score again and in the end I got 36 goals, so hopefully it'll carry on the total, you know, like this season, so uh, with any luck, uh, if I can keep on going two a game or one a game, I'll be well, well happy with it, so uh, I'll look for 20, then 21, 22 and onwards, anything is a bonus. Once again, support. Fantastic. And it's, it's been like that ever since, well, ever since I've been here. Um, even when we were struggling in the Premier League, the support was absolutely fantastic. So they're not fair weather supporters. You know, they'll, they'll support us through, through thick and thin. And, um, you know, I'm just like to, like to thank them. And no word of a lie. I mean, it just lives, gives our lads. I mean, there's a lot of young lads in the side. And to see the support we get, it, Listen, without a shadow of a doubt, and um, they really need that support. It doesn't matter how far you're at, six yards, five yards, you hit them hard, you got a chance. So uh, that's the way I look at it.